We are here today for the Ladies of Supernatural. And as much as I'd love to stand here with the microphone and take up all the time, that's just silliness. Let's bring out the girls. Amber Benson. Elena Hoffman. And Ms. Emily Perkins. Hey. We seem to be down a mic. Oh. We can. No, come on. Hey, girl. Oh. I don't know. Well, then I'm going to go over here. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Come here. Yeah. There you us. go. We can really squish. We can. Yeah, yeah, we can totally. Come on. <laughs> it's girl time. It was a Halcon dream to get to moderate a panel. We just shot that out of the park, girls. Nice. I will give you a little room, though. <laughs> just a little. So, the Supernatural. I'm a huge fan. I came to the game late, but watched seven and a half seasons in four and a half weeks. Oh, yeah. Did you go to the bathroom or eat or... I had the flu. Check your email. <laughs> For four and a half weeks? No. <laughs> but it only took, like, uh, three days to get really, really hooked. Oh. And, and this leads me to my first question. Miss Becky Rosen, superfan, were you a fan of Supernatural before you were the biggest fan of Supernatural? No, actually, I hadn't, I hadn't seen the show before. Actually, I, I think when it first started, like I watched the first episode because I knew it was locally shot, so I thought, oh, I guess it's kind of my responsibility to watch an episode. But then I kind of thought, oh, this is a beautiful people show. I would never, ever get hired to work on this show. So Boo. then I stopped watching it. <laughs> but um, yeah, I was pleasantly surprised to be on it eventually. <laughs> I'm a fan now. You're one of the, yeah, you're one of the beautiful people now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Awesome. Uh, were you girls fans of the show beforehand? <laughs> wow. We really want Amber to answer. We're down a mic and there's <laughs> mics everywhere. It's going to be like freestyling with the double mics. Yeah. Um, <laughs> makes my, I make myself sound way cooler than I am there. <laughs> um, yeah, I had seen the show uh, previously before I was on the show, um, and I thought it was really smart, you know, and I love mythology, and I love that they, they sort of, they melded mythology and monsters, and I thought that was really, really sharp of them, so. I, uh, I got the audition in my email, and I was like, that show's still on? <laughs> <laughs> and it's still on. Um, it's like the show that will never go away, which is great for you guys. Yeah. Um, no, so I didn't watch it at all. And um, to be honest with you, it's a little daunting. I don't have four weeks to watch. And you have to keep a strict schedule to do it. You do. It's, that's a big commitment. Yeah. It reminds me of when I first got a job on Stargate. You guys watch Stargate? And um, I remember I was invited to MGM, you know, for a meeting with Charlie Cohen, who was over the show. And I got in there and he was like, so have you ever seen the show? And I was like, no, I've never seen it. And he like radioed his assistant. He's like, hey, can you bring her some of the episodes? And she literally came in like with a box and was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, oh wow, that's a lot of shows. <laughs> so I don't know, I'll get to Supernatural eventually. I, I, li I like to watch it live now. I, I, I've missed, I live it. So. Amber played a character named Lenore. Everyone know Lenore? And Lenore has the auspicious title of being the first supernatural creature that the boys saw good in. Yeah, because I'm a nice person. I'm nice like that. Um, I, I, I don't know. All I know is that like, I got like, carried around by hot boys for the whole of the episode, basically. So I was really just not paying attention to anything else. I was just like, oh, pick me up some more. <laughs> but I appreciate that, that, that I, was, I was the good guy and they, they saw the goodness inside. But be, be, they saw beyond the teeth, the many teeth that I wanted to keep and they would not let me keep them. 
I'm like, I who else? Maybe they just saw the teeth and they were yeah. like, wow, I like this. <laughs> yeah, there are things you can't do with those teeth, though. <laughs> oh, there are a lot of little pointy things to start to go sideways. A lot, a lot of little pointy <laughs> things in my mouth. No one wants to go near that. Thirteen minutes to get to Hot Boys and going sideways. Not even. It's probably like six minutes. Time flies up here. <laughs> Speaking of things that you get to keep, did you girls keep anything from the show, memorabilia-wise? Uh, no. My memories. <laughs> um, I have my chair back. So you know, you have your director's chair with your name, and it says Supernatural on the back. Very nice. I usually, I, I usually try and steal those from the props department. I'm like, can I have that? They're like, but what if you come back? I'm like, you can make me another one. <laughs> What's it like being on set? Um, hmm. It's hot. Yeah, well, just a few, few of Jared's hairs. <laughs> it was actually kind of lint. I don't know if it was actually his hair, but I kept it. <laughs> What did you do with it? <laughs> it's in a little box. <laughs> Is there like a picture of him and some candles? <laughs> Should I call him and warn him? <laughs> yeah, it's like a... Yeah, yeah it's a great shrine. <laughs> um, yeah, it was pretty hot on set. <laughs> I know, literally, like... Well, in the episode that I did, it was literally, because... Like when Jared was tied to the bed, he was like extremely warm because he. Wait, what just happened? And <laughs> <laughs> when Jared to was tied show. to the bed, is the line. Yeah, they had to bring in fans, <laughs> like three fans, like the worry. Like the blowing fans. fans. Yeah. Not, the blowing, not. Yeah. There. <laughs> there was only room for one fan in the room <laughs> of this type. Yeah. Um, it's getting hot already. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, what was it like for you? Um, it was really lovely. There were a lot of dogs. Yeah. And, uh, the, in Vancouver yeah. in general. Yeah. There's just a lot of, actually here too. A lot of dogs. Canada. Yeah. Got Canadian, like dogs. Canadian dogs. Um, which would, but that's fun to come to work and people brought their, their pets and so you get to like pat dogs. <laughs> I don't know why that's super exciting and for me. And then Jared but. is like a big untrained puppy. He really is. Like he gives you a hug and you're like, you know, you're like four feet bigger than me. And you, he gives really nice hugs. Just you feel like your ribs are going to... I'm trying to think of other... Uh, it's a great crew. That, that was sort of, for me, one of the big takeaways is the crew is fantastic. They're super sweet and they're really, really good at what they do. And so to walk on a set that's like a machine, a very well-oiled machine, that's really nice. No one's, no one's dicking around. It's very like professional and things get done quickly and you're not there forever and ever and ever, which is nice, especially because you're doing a lot of special effects and, and crazy stunt stuff. And usually those days just drag on and on and on. But I feel like on Supernatural, they moved more quickly because they, they were such a good team. Yeah, I, I second that, and um, I've had the pleasure of working on several long-running series, and that's generally the case when you walk into this big family, is what it's like. Um, I always, you know, say when I go to work, I get to just go play with my friends, and that's what it feels like. Yeah, pet the dog and um, hang out with your buddies um, and play. I mean, it's it's really fun. Yeah, it's very efficient, uh, very respectful. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's like walking into a big family. So we talked a little about Becky, and we mentioned Lenore, and you got to play two girls on Supernatural. Um, Josie, one of my very favorite one um, episode characters, and the ass kicker, Audubon. <laughs> and can we talk about the jeans? The jeans? The jeans. Her jeans? Yes. Yeah, I liked her jeans. <laughs> Did, did, did you like the jeans? <laughs> it's really nice when you, like, as a strong female character, can go to work in, like, normal pants. Because other shows, not so much. And I think that's one of the reasons it stuck out. Y yeah, maybe. You know. Yeah, like my Black Canary costume. It's really short. 
and I had really high heels, and I had to do like jump, like I, I, I did stunts where I was like, uh, hold, we got cut, you guys, my, my heel got stuck in my fishnets again. <laughs> I can't do the wire work in four inch heels, but it's icy. Okay, let's do it again. Um, yeah, so the wardrobe was comfortable, but um, the character was actually just very comfortable. Yeah, she's a cool character. I mean, it's a good job if you can get it to play the queen of hell. I just totally had a fan moment here. <laughs> we were afraid that it would happen. <laughs> oh. oh, like magic. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Why did they do that? That, was, that wasn't smart. I'm danger. Foul. I'm danger, Will Robinson. Yeah. Stay away. I don't think it was dangerous. I think it was lovely. Oh, I'll go to the dirty place. I like the dirty place. I got no problems there. The gutter is my friend. I believe this is when we encourage her. Maybe. It has to be the right moment. And we're, it'll, it'll pop up every now and then, but I'm bummed. <laughs> and we're sideways again. So, um, everyone landed in Halifax yesterday, yes? Has anyone been in Halifax before, or is this the first time in the city here? First time. It's yeah. great. Ooh. People are really nice. It's beautiful. It's very beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have changing color trees in Los Angeles. <laughs> so I took like a thousand and five pictures of rocks and changing color leaves today. Yeah, it's beautiful. I ran down by the park and the beach. It was really pretty. So, um, in your storylines, was there any particular things that, as an actress, you really, either of you, jumped in on and loved doing on set? Was there anything that you were like, girls don't do that, no. Girls do everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Especially girls with pointy teeth. <laughs> what are you saying about me? Are you trying to say I'm slutty? <laughs> I'm not slutty, I'm just friendly. <laughs> You were slutty too? <laughs> no, I was I, awesome. I, I was slutty in my own mind. Oh. Um, I, think, mm -hmm. I, I think for me, like, uh, it was just really fun to play somebody that, that maybe walked the line of being like a dark character, or, even though she wasn't bad per se. Spoiler alert. <laughs> um, if you haven't seen it, you're in the wrong room. That's true. <laughs> right? That's true. Like me. <laughs> So cover your ears. Yeah. <laughs> this is for later. Um, and because uh, and, and, I, I'm always, they look at me and they think I'm like nice, which is funny. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, so to play to play a, a darker character was really fun for me. I had I had a good time with that. Um, I, I I always like I feel like the bad guys are always so much more fun to play than the good guys. The good guys sort of lurk around and try and be good all the time. The bad guys are like, screw it, I'm just gonna be a schmuck all the time. <laughs> and I yeah, bad's always better, right? Yeah, I'm a fan. Yeah. It, it's yeah. like My the line in Scarface. Sorry, no, no, no. it's like you need the bad guys. <laughs> yeah. You know? okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. My favorite moments were definitely the dark moments too. The, the, yeah, when the demon had its, had its greatest influence, that's when Becky was having the most fun. For <laughs> <laughs> that being said, though, I, I liked to, with my character, you know, they had such an arc where she was just the bad guy and she was just the brute force. Um, I actually tried to find layers in her because I don't think that there's a lot of longevity in that shallow of a character. Um, <clears throat> So when I could play the opposite, you know, Misha Collins directed, um, as time goes by, the character that showed Abaddon's backstory or Josie's backstory. And this was a conversation that he and I had. I, I really wanted to connect with the fandom from Josie's perspective so that there was you know, some layers. Because uh, otherwise, she's, she's, you know, she's super fun. I mean, really a great character to play, but kind of just here. You know, there's, there's not a lot of depth to her character. There, there wasn't a lot of moments to um, show layers. And so I looked for opportunities to show layers, which is what we as actors like to do. It must have been interesting to get to play Josie in that way and have a chance to explore. Yeah, and Adam Glass, who wrote my character mostly, um, 
he was really good at communicating his intentions with the character and he's just a he's just a great guy and so you know, I'd get an email, you know, I'd get the script, but there's a lot of times there's stuff that's not necessarily on the page, but there's intentions. And so I'd get an email from him and, um, you know, this is what I want, this is how Josie feels. And so it was nice to have a reference point. And in her case, she was trying to break the glass ceiling. And so she took on Abaddon as an opportunity to sort of empower herself and, and, and be sort of a bold woman um, from her era where she wasn't really accepted and she was sort of a woman in a man's world and uh, and then she you know threw herself a little on the sword for Henry there was that sort of you know other storyline going on so yeah it's fun to find those moments Libby's um, awake <laughs> shall we open it to some questions from the audience sure uh, I can't see if there's anybody there or not because there's one, two, and three right there. People are walking. But. Oh, no, they're not. Oh! Does anybody have a question? Nobody has any questions. They're like, just sit up there and talk about naughty things. Be dirty, Amber. I will. Absolutely. Away we go. <laughs> Hi. Um, my question's for um, Amber, actually. Um, because everyone else I've seen just on Supernatural. But at first, you were always Tara to me from Buffy. <laughs> so, so I'm just like, what was it? Because they're very different characters. I was, what was it like playing someone that's very quiet and we didn't really get much of Tara until later on? And she died. But um, <laughs> and then, then for in Supernatural, you just kind of like all the struggle that we see almost right away. Yeah, no, they're very, they were very different characters. I, um, I played this character, Tara McClay, on, on Buffy, um, and she was very shy, and she had trouble, you know, sort of engaging with groups of people, and, and she had a very long arc of, like, coming into her own. Like, she would, she would do magic, but, like, from the doorway, like, <laughs> away from everybody, like, ooh, while well, they're all fighting. Um, but Lenora was, like, her, her antithesis, because Lenora was, like, in there immediately, stating her, you know, what she needed um, right off the bat. She was very, she, she was very proactive, and I think Tara was always very reactive. Um, so for me, it was really fun to get to sort of play somebody totally different. Like I said, it's always fun to sort of, to, to play those darker characters because they get, to, they get to do things that the nice people don't get to. The nice people are always worried about hurting people's feelings. And the bad people don't care. And Tara was, um, Tara was so, the and nice I, person. When, especially yeah. when Willow went dark, she's just there like, no. Yeah, she was always like, don't do anything bad. Be nice. <laughs> she was kind of a, the con... I think after Giles left, she was sort of the conscience of the group a little bit, sort of following in his footsteps. So, so yeah, it was, really, it was really fun to play somebody so different. And I'm, I'm not like Tara in that I'm super shy. I'm like Chatty Cathy. You just pull a string and I don't shut up. So, so it, she was very difficult in some ways because it was always like, okay, bring it back. Don't talk. I know you want to say something, but keep your mouth shut. Um, so, yeah. Okay, thank you. Oh, well, thank you. Um, this is for Elena. Hi again. Hi. Um, what was your favorite scene with Abaddon before she was killed off? Oh, I loved kicking the shit out of Mark Shepard. <laughs> um, I didn't mind talking dirty to Jensen. That was okay, too. Actually, that was weird. I was really nervous about that one. Um, I read the script, and I was like, are you kidding me? I have I to say all of those natural. things. And it's not just to him. It's to him and the 200 men standing behind him. <laughs> That's, it's, this is like how weird it is. It's like you're at work and you're in the break room and you're like talking and then they're like, hey, you two, kiss. You're working with like all of your friends and then you're like right in someone's face. It's weird. I'm a little hot now. Um, the, the, the beating up of Crowley though, um, uh, um, Brad, one of the camera operators, it was really funny because Mark's like tied to the chair and he went around with a deli counter and he gave everyone a number so they could all kick the shit out of Mark after. <laughs> Honestly, it seemed like it would have been pretty fun. It was. And Mark is such a great sport. I mean, I've known Mark for years and he's a very good friend of mine. I, I love Mark dearly. Thank you. There's a lot of tying up in Supernatural, isn't there? You don't realize that until you start talking about it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you're like, wow, yeah. Someone's got a little less than infant. It's a lot of the guys tied up. 
A lot of men. That's right. The a lot men of, are tied. Yeah. I got tied up. Oh, you did? That? I did. I got Oh, tied they up. tied me up, too. <laughs> <laughs> forgot about that. I feel left out. They've never tied me up. <laughs> okay, who brought the rope? I think Fifty Shades of Demon. I think you better pitch that. Fanfic? Have you guys read fanfic? Sorry, sidetrack. Have you? I, I try. I try not to because I don't want to think about porn. Some, some of the things people just thought. Yeah, there's some naughty oh. things that happen. Can I tell you my fanfic story? Can I tell you guys? Please. Yes. So I was, um, I was just like watching TV one night with my girlfriend, and my other girlfriend texted me, and she was like, "Oh my gosh, you're all over Tumblr or something about like the Queen of Hell." I was like, "Oh yeah, that's me." Um, <laughs> I had no idea what Tumblr was. And she was like, oh, there's really beautiful fan art of you, like drawings. And I was like, oh, great. She's like, I'll send you some. Uh-huh. Okay. So she sent me one, and I clicked on it. Don't do that. Don't do that. And I read it, and I was like, oh, Dean had pink, pink panties on. <laughs> and Abaddon was sort of like the guy in the situation. It was porn, you guys. <laughs> Porn. They write porn about us. <laughs> Whoever weird. wrote that is going to be uh, very happy that you quoted it just now. And <laughs> I've told that story a lot of times. It's weird. Um, first of all, we were lucky enough to have Mark Shepard here last year, and he kind of took over the entire room. As he does. Yes. He refused to get off the stage after the hour was done. And just like It was kind of awesome. If he even it. stays on the stage. <laughs> oh, no, he's not Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Totally worked the room. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, I know, Mark. Twice. Yeah. Um, so my question actually ties into kind of a story that you were telling. I was going to say, like, um, given the content of Supernatural and like some of the outtakes and things like that, what is the weirdest moment that you've ever had on Supernatural? I only was there twice, so <laughs> I, I, they were very kind. Nobody played any pranks on me. Nobody harassed me. They were all very gentlemanly and, and kind. I didn't. They I just carried you around. They just everywhere. carried me around. <laughs> like, oh, I did that wrong. Can you just can you do that scene again? Or you just carry me? Like, Linda Joe just picks me. Like, just picks me up like I weigh nothing. I was like, oh, I should have eaten more at lunch. <laughs> <laughs> you probably had the you know the most as far as like getting pranked and harassed. And uh, no, they don't prank me. I <laughs> they're I scared they're scared of afraid you. of me. <laughs> You I are keep, the queen of hell. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to get it one day. Because I keep getting asked, and I'm like, they're afraid of me. It's just, I know. One day, I'm going to get it. Um, there, it's, a love, again, a lovely, lovely place to work. And I remember Jensen was telling me once that um, Eric Kripke, who created the show, I think sat him and Jared down during the first season and was like, look, I can write all the brotherly love chemistry, you know, that I want, but if you guys don't get along, the show's not going to last. And that they really, you know, took that to heart. They are best friends. They hang out all the time and they know what they've got. So it's a, it is a beautiful environment to work in. And if you've ever worked on a show where the leads don't get along, it sucks. It's miserable for everyone. Um, and when you walk onto a show where everyone gets along and there's very little ego and um, it's just, it's a, it's a beautiful experience. So I will say it's a beautiful experience. Mm -hmm. And not just because they're pretty, <laughs> although it helps. <laughs> it's tough to go to work, let me tell you. Uh, hi ladies, welcome to Nova Scotia. Hope you have Thank a great you. time here. <laughs> Thanks. We love having you here. Um, my question was, because you guys have been in like a lot of different shows, with, this could be like for Supernatural or it could be from like one of your other fandoms. I was just wondering, um, was there any like a really interesting, or funny, or moving moment you might have had with a fan at a convention, like something s silly that happened or something like really moving? Oh. <laughs> or weird? Yeah. I have all of the above. All of the above. But I think my favorite story, because it's because it's not it's not sad or 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 you know emotionally fraught, uh, is a, a girl when I was at San Diego Comic Con, the very beginning of being on Buffy, not really understanding all of this that I was about to embark <laughs> upon. Um, this girl came up to the table and uh, she's like, I, 
I would like to ask for your hand in marriage. <laughs> and then she got down on one knee and provi provided me with a beautiful uh, ring. Uh, and I, I look back on that and I really wish that I had, I had rolled with it because uh, I, that may never happen again for me. <laughs> she was very attractive. And I, I had to be like, I don't know if the, my, my boyfriend at the, would appreciate me accepting, but it's a beautiful <laughs> ring. Um, she could be your sugar mama. <sighs> I make dumb choices sometimes. <laughs> well, in fairness, it wasn't legal then. Now it is. That's true. It That's could come true. back around. So, yeah. You, you have one? Yeah. yeah I've, um, I've had, like, Supernatural fans say that, like, I remember this one woman who was, like, very, is, like, seriously ill, and she was in the hospital for a long time, and she watched Supernatural... She watched the whole series while she was <clears throat> while she was convalescing, and yeah, she and she said it just like got her through a really difficult period in her life. And I I don't know I could relate to that experience because for me like when I'm sort of in transition in a transition period in my life, that's when I get really into something, whether it's like a TV show or like <clears throat> a book series or something. And so yeah, it was just like a neat moment of connection. Yeah, I've gotten that a lot too. A lot of um, healing moments through the show, but also really through the connectivity of the fan base, which is mm -hmm. really beautiful. Mm -hmm. And um, I have a more funny story that, because um, there's a lot of sad ones. Uh, Mark and I were in New Zealand one time. <laughs> We're about to take a picture, and this woman was kind of shaking. And we're, he's like, "It's all right, darling. It's all right, darling." She goes, "I'm just trying not to shake myself." <laughs> <laughs> Mark, Mark he told, told that Mark story told last, last year. year. <laughs> I was sitting it's right there. One, <laughs> it's one of our favorites. Mark and I share it a lot. <laughs> yeah, it was good. I had another woman, like in Wales, and she like came up to me to take a picture, and as she's hugging me, she's like, "I hope I don't get you sick." <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thanks. That's amazing. <sighs> Hi, ladies. Thanks for Hi. coming. Um, on another note, what's your most embarrassing story ever? Oh, like in real life? Anything. 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 Oh, so many. <laughs> <laughs> so, these are painful. <laughs> Usually they're just really sad. <laughs> I, I have one. It was super embarrassing, but thankfully I was in another country. Um, <laughs> I was at work. I consider myself relatively intelligent and well-read, and sometimes you're just like, how was I so stupid? So we were doing this scene, and we shot it. We shot the ma So when you shoot a scene, you shoot the master, which is like the wide shot, and then you punch in on the coverage. And So we had done like a lot of coverage, and we turned around on me. <laughs> and I said, I hope... My line was, I hope this hasn't deterred you. I was saying Dieter. <laughs> and the script supervisor, who's the one who, like, you know, makes sure everything's in order, he's like, <laughs> okay. He's like, it's deter. And I was like, huh? <laughs> I hope I haven't deetered you. Can we just put that in the lexicon now? That's amazing. <laughs> Nobody repeat that. <laughs> Thankfully, I was in Turkey and none of the crew spoke English. But the other actors, I think, lost a lot of respect for me. <laughs> so we drank a lot that night. <laughs> that sucked. It didn't deter you from, deter you from drinking. <laughs> deter. Nothing deters me from but drinking. But it's how you say it. Like, it still deter... De Deter. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to find Thank a way you. to help I appreciate you. it. Deter. Yeah. De Deter. De de <laughs> de de yeah. Deter. It sucked. <laughs> oh, it would not deter you. <laughs> <laughs> now it's just my Uncle Dieter and my. <laughs> Who's on Twitter? <laughs> he likes to comment on things. It's lovely. <laughs> Oh my God, embarrassing story. There's so many. Um, I'm trying to think of good ones that, that, that um, I don't, I, I, you go. <laughs> I'm trying to think of ones, uh, like, I remember, um, like, when, when we were shooting Ginger Snaps, and, like, this is weird because um, sometimes there's, like, a, 
uh, weird parallel between like your some real life and like what you're what you're performing. And so it was this. It was like a scene where like Bridget was. It was like the second the second Ginger Snap story. She, she's like. Um, becoming like sexually aggressive, so there was, it was this kind of like scene in bed with a guy, and um, and I hadn't like eaten anything. I think I missed lunch because I was doing like special effects makeup or something because she's becoming a werewolf, and um, and in the, in the middle of the scene, it was like it was like a quiet kind of weirdly scarily intimate scene. Like my stomach made the most weird, long, <laughs> long noise that went on for like a full minute. And of course, you're wearing a microphone, right? And everyone has headsets on. <laughs> And it was like a totally inhuman noise. Like it didn't even sound like a person made that noise. And then they're like, cut! And then the sound guy goes, what was that? <laughs> that was, yeah, that was embarrassing. <laughs> um, uh, this, this, is, this, is, this is finally embarrassing. This is embarrassing enough. This will work. Um, <laughs> and it doesn't, it doesn't shame anybody else. Because a lot of mine involve other people. <laughs> so I don't want to shame them. Um, when I was uh, 14, I worked on this movie called King of the Hill that Steven Soderbergh directed. And it took place during the Depression, the film. And uh, it was the first thing I'd ever, like the first real thing I'd ever done as an actor. And I was just so excited. And, and uh, they take me uh, upstairs to the dressing rooms for the first day of shooting. They ha and they're like, we put some, some uh, period underwear in your room and some clothes and stuff. And uh, so I go in there, and I'm looking at the underwear that they've got hung up for me to put on. And there's <laughs> one set is very, very sheer, <laughs> and the other side is like more, more cut, like 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 granny panty kind of like full on like coverage. And I was looking at them, and I was like, <laughs> so I put them both on. <laughs> I just assume that like one is for underneath the other. <laughs> And they're looking at me. They're like, "What do you, what do you have under the dress?" <laughs> I was like, well, "I put everything in there." <laughs> and you told me to put. And she's like, "You put both sets of underwear on." <laughs> so that, yeah, that was pretty embarrassing. I had to go take them off. I went for the granny panties. I had the sheer. Just I couldn't look at it after that. It's yeah, it's marginally embarrassing, but it's just me. We are at the five-minute mark. We can take one more question. Uh, hey, I kind of have two questions. One's for Alana. One, I was wondering, do you think Josie was still aware when Abaddon took over, even later on when she went forward into the future? <laughs> Tell us. Sounds good. <laughs> um, I always thought the more interesting storyline would be Josie in the future. Um, uh, with her knowledge of the men in letters and after they lost the prophet and, you know, with the, in, uh, the introduction of the men of letters. So I'm not sure if she was aware. I think she made that sacrifice, but I think, um, I think that, I think that that going forward, if they were to bring me back, that to me would be a more sustainable storyline. And I think it would be interesting. I think then she would be an ally to the guys, uh, and then also be a strong female character, but that's good. All right, and my other one is for Emily. I was wondering if you thought Becky's storyline, if her sort of movement towards going crazier super fan was in character for her or not? Um, well, I think she was under the influence of the demon. Like, I don't think that she would have done it otherwise, yeah. but I think she, she definitely had like the capacity to go in that direction, obviously. <laughs> I think she's just like a hyperbolic representation of fandom, which was very fun for me, because yeah, I think there's something like exaggerated about fandom, which makes, which is what makes it, yeah, interesting and fun, yeah. Thank you. I just watched the episode where they're at the Supernatural convention, <laughs> Becky's in the other night. It's one of my pre-con rituals, because I get such a kick out of how, it's at a con, and they don't know that they're at a con. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it was very surreal, especially when then I went to a supernatural convention. I was like, huh, <laughs> kind of familiar. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was such an interesting throw to the fans, because so many of the fans experience that all the time. I thought it was really neat. But this has been absolutely wonderful, ladies. Can we get a warm round of applause <laughs> for the kick-ass ladies of Supernatural? Can I just say, um, 
Thank you guys so much. I'm so imp I've been a part of a lot of fandoms, and I'm so impressed with the Supernatural fandom. It really is this beautiful family. We call it the SPN family, and it really is. And I mean, I know that I do these things because I love them, and I know all of, I, I call it my squad. You know, we all do these things because we love them and because you guys show up. So thank you guys for coming. Thanks. And thank you for moderating. It was an absolute pleasure. <clears throat> Alcon!